<clears throat> All right. Gosh, we've got a, a great group uh, <clears throat> already here. I'll wait till uh, Paulo gets. All right, Paulo is uh, uh, online. <clears throat> you guys can't see him yet, but Paulo is in uh, Luxembourg, uh, not too far from Anders in Sweden. Uh, so we're glad to have both of you guys from across the pond with us today. Hey, there's Paulo. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Paulo, do you know Anders, who's from Sweden? <laughs> well, I haven't had the pleasure yet. <laughs> yeah. And we're getting way across the world now. You're going to see uh, in just a minute. Uh, I, man, I love this. <laughs> I love this opportunity to uh, be with people from, from all over the world. Uh, Gary Gooch is in the process of joining us. Uh, Gary is in New Zealand. It is... Uh, Five o'clock tomorrow morning, where she is. Uh, so, yeah, she's she's twelve hours uh, ahead of you, Anders. So, my right, gosh, it's uh, uh, and all right. Good morning, Carrie. We're glad to have you with us. <laughs> and Jeff and Sandy are joining back up. <clears throat> all right. Well, I've, I've hit the record button, and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get started. There may be some others uh, join us. Picture. All right, I've got. Um, I've got it going like this. I, I sent you all uh, some scripture in advance. I don't know if, <clears throat> if everybody got it, but it's some really really cool <clears throat> things today. I'm I'm first gonna read to you Second uh, Timothy one. Um, uh, verse two, uh, this might be Second Timothy four. Yeah, I think it's Second Timothy four, verse two. Um, and uh, and we're gonna just look at that one <clears throat> uh, sentence, that one verse, uh, and then we're we're gonna take that apart. <clears throat> And uh, we're going to have lots of good discussion. I didn't say hi to Bob. Good morning, Bob. Glad to have you here, too. And Sandy and Jeff, we can see you guys now. So Hi there. Having te technical difficulties. But you got it now. All right. Yeah. All good. right. My IT guy fixed it. All right. <laughs> good. good. I have to say I was a little frantic because I thought I saw Father uh, Richard uh, Rohr on. Uh, Anders does. I didn't, I didn't Anders have, does look I didn't like have him. Audio. <laughs> ah, yeah, Anders does look like uh, Father Ooh, Richard yeah. Rohr. Yeah. I, I did a second take. Yeah. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Second uh, Timothy four verse one. Uh, Paul's writing to Timothy. Timothy's a, a young guy at this time. He's the <clears throat> senior pastor of the church at Ephesus, where. Paul had been before, and uh, he says this, broadcast this word or this good news of God's goodness and grace and love to all, broadcast this <clears throat> on every occasion, even when it doesn't seem to be convenient or appropriate. Give evidence to this message value every individual in your audience highly, esteem people's authentic identity passionately, teach tirelessly. <laughs> and oh man, just the, just the things in that one uh, verse, we could probably talk about uh, all day, but uh, let's, just, let's just start with it. Paul's telling Timothy, broadcast this good news on every occasion. Now, I'm not looking for a specific answer here, so <clears throat> don't think I'm playing games with you. Uh, I just, I want, I want to take as much time as we want and have you guys share uh, any and all things that you understand the good news to be. This is what Paul uh, tells Timothy and us to, to broadcast on every occasion, even when it's not uh, convenient or doesn't seem to be appropriate. So what all does the good news 
include? Peace. Peace. Yeah. Who said that? I did, Jody. Oh, good. Jody. Your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> the good news includes peace. Yeah. yeah. The love of Christ. The love of Christ. Yeah. It includes everybody. It mm. includes everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good news if it's not good news for everybody. Our our original goodness and the goodness of creation and the fact that it holds everything we need now or ever will. Oh, that's good. Say that again. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> The, the goodness of our original selves, who we are, who we've been created to be, the goodness of creation in that it contains everything we need now or ever will. Man, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Stan. God is not angry with us. He's always for us. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Getting goosebumps. Or Jesus bumps. <laughs> Lenny's putting his hearts up there. <clears throat> yeah. And goodness means the same goodness we feel is the goodness God feels towards every single person. And we get to share that. Oh, man. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, wow. yes. <laughs> what did Roger say? What did you say, Roger? And we are all his children. Sorry, I didn't mean to butt in. But... No, you're not butting in. We yes, are we... all his children. <laughs> yeah. Who else? That God is love and that uh, Jesus Christ came to tell us that the Father is good and love us. Jesus came to tell us the Father is good. And that is good news. The Father is good <laughs> to us and to all people. Yeah. What else does the good news contain? It's okay to live a full life. Just okay? Yeah. Matter of fact, it's, it's commissioned. Yeah. It's, it's it's what we're here for. Yeah, it's what we're here for. Yeah, but well, but 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 I think sometimes you just need to put your arm around somebody and say, you know, it's okay to do this. It's just okay to live a full life. Indeed, it is. Yeah, yeah. We we don't need to be uh, poor or lacking or uh, <laughs> uh, or without. Uh, it's okay to live a full life. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to be restrained. Yeah, we, 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 we need to trust. Uh, I mean, Jeff was just talking about it. Fundamentally, we need our intuition is our soul's ambition. What's really down inside us is who we need to be. And by the way, we need to be ourselves because everybody else is taken, right? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, but, but it's, it, it, this is so important in, in reality. It's, it's, it's just okay to just be you. And just just do what your soul tells you to do. Yeah. Be who you are. Who else? What's the good news include? <clears throat> being you is being free. It's really living in freedom. Freedom. Yeah. Living free. <clears throat> yeah. Man, those are all just <clears throat> wonderful things. Broadcast this good news, Paul says, on every occasion, even when it doesn't seem to be convenient or appropriate. And uh, as it's not original with us, but some of you uh, <clears throat> say it from time to time, um,
I, I just was letting Emory in and I, and I, I lost my, uh, I lost my thought there. Oh yeah. Broadcast the good news all the time. Uh, when necessary, use words. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right. Is the good news, is the gospel an invitation or a proclamation? The proclamation. It's a proclamation. <clears throat> yeah. It's not... It's not an invitation. <laughs> it's not something that <clears throat> uh, a, a gift is not an invitation. A gift is a gift. <clears throat> and what we proclaim is the good news uh, that the gift is already ours. Uh, we just, <clears throat> uh, many people aren't yet uh, aware of it. Um, yeah, Jeff. Oh, uh, just along the same lines, the pro proclaiming the gift within is the giver himself. <laughs> yes, it is. The gift is the giver himself. <clears throat> the gift that God has given us is himself. Christ in us, all three uh, in us. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I see it as an invitation along with a proclamation. Because you can give a gift to somebody, but then they might choose to open it or not. So you're, you're, we're given the gift and we're also invited to receive it. I, fully. I, think, I think we need to be careful not to wrap it. It's not a secret. It's not, it's not something we're trying to keep from people. It's not, it shouldn't even be a surprise. Uh, yeah. That's I good. agree. See, we, we've wrapped it in, 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 in doctrine. I mean, Paul was talking about doctrine last week. And, and we wrap this in some kind of, so, so that you've got you, you, you to do some kind of work. You've got you to untape it or, or, or tear it off or, or, or whatever. And it's, it's like it's a secret. And it really isn't a secret at all. The heavens declare it. That's what, yeah, that's really good, Bob. I, yes. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, it, it's not, it's not hidden. It's not packaged. And uh, uh, we just, we live it out. We use words when necessary. <clears throat> and uh, that, uh, that word receive is, uh, it, it's one of those things that have, uh, <clears throat> has not been translated well into English. Um, uh, the Greek word, is lambano, L-A-M-B-A-N-O, or lambano, however it's pronounced. And it means to um, appropriate what is already yours. It, it's uh, the good news, the gospel, everything we have is already ours. Uh, it's not that we go and take it uh, or receive it, it's already ours we become aware of what is already ours. And uh, we become aware of it by seeing it in each other, uh, you know, by hearing the good news, by hearing people uh, proclaim it. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it is a, uh, yeah, the, the invitation, uh, if you will, is to be aware of what we already have. Uh, yeah. And I, I've been thinking about this lately in, in, in light of the, uh, the term we use, saved. Are you saved? Uh, and, and we've talked about that uh, quite a bit on here. The, the, you know, the Greek word is sozo, S-O-Z-O, uh, and another form of it is soterio, salvation. But it, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, in, in former days, uh, I would ask somebody, are you saved? And I had a lot of people ask me if I was saved because, <laughs> because it certainly didn't appear to them uh, that I was. <laughs> yeah, Ro Roger, uh, Roger knows that. <clears throat> um, and uh, we've had some discussions lately. Uh, you know, what are we saved from? Uh, Jeff, you got your hand up? Go ahead. Well, uh 
not to prevent you from going on, but I just wanted to, I, something resonated with me when we were talking about whether this good news is hidden. Well, we do have, we do have evidence that, that minds have been blinded. And from Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 about may the God, may God open your eyes and enlighten you. It sounds to me like a prayer at minimum or a call to see that work of God done in someone's life by prayer. That their eyes might be open, just like our eyes were opened at one time to see what can be seen, but is we're blinded to in a in in prior to that seeing yeah and the the light of christ uh opens our eyes shows us what is uh is true um but yeah exactly so uh in, in talking about this saved thing uh asking somebody uh are you saved or how do you get saved? Something that some of us have been talking about recently is, well, what did we need to be saved from? Or what are we saved from? And uh, I've been thinking a lot about this, that this weekend and, and uh, the board's just been really been speaking to me. Um, the whole concept uh, that we need to be saved from the wrath of an angry God, that's all based on a lie. And, and you guys you guys said that so well, uh, you know, when I ask you what the good news is, you, you guys said God's not angry with us. You know, he's always, he's always loved us. Uh, he, you know, he's always been, for us, all the different things that, that you guys said. Um, if that is true, and I, I'm not going to say if, if I'm going to say since that's true, since God has always loved us, since we've always been included, since he's always been for us, since we were made in his image and likeness, since he is love, since he's pure light with no trace of darkness, since he is good, since his grace covers everything, the whole concept that we had to be saved from God is based on a lie. The whole concept is, is does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's that's literally what we've been preached i mean we, 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 you, they really weren't saving us from hell or the devil we were having to be saved from god that's exactly what the what the whole thing has been yeah and, and what a which which fundamentally makes god a schizophrenic bipolar yeah and and certainly not good <laughs> uh so carrie do you, do, do, were you going to say something or did I? Oh, no, I just thought that was really good. I've just been on mute, so that's why you haven't been able to hear me when I've been answering questions. But um, I, you know, fiddled around with it and realized that that was what the problem was. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I no, said really great answers to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Kitty? I saw Jeff raising his hand earlier. Yeah. Again? Sorry, yeah, I, must I, I was just wondering if that was rhetorical or if you were asking what we were saved from in, in terms of what we might be hearing. And uh, if it is, I would say what I heard was darkness. Like that blinded condition, we're saved from darkness. But the whole idea of making the whole realm of making God out to be what he's not, what scripture, Jesus clearly showed he wasn't, which is a wrathful God, demanding vengeance, etc. And taking the, taking the emphasis or the focus off the darkness that does obscure, that does blind. 
Another, yeah. a, a better word might be, have you been awakened to the truth that's already inside you? You are, <laughs> you already have everything you need. Have you been awakened to that? And grace lets us be, lets us see what's important, what sees what's in us a little bit at a time. And we are just overawed each time it happens. Yeah. That, that was so good. That's exactly <laughs> right. Because the truth is that we are, we are light. There isn't any darkness within us. We don't even have to look at the darkness or look at what is right or wrong because we're not eating from that tree. We are only eating from the tree of life, which is just we, everything that rises up and looks like a problem, God already has because of our differences. He has amazing answers and ideas and solutions that work for all of our uniqueness. It's not like there's your answer to this problem because um, this is the only thing that works. He works with our nature because some things appeal appeal better. Yeah, yeah, Bob. So it's not really an invitation or a declaration. It's a revelation. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. So just thinking about that we never have ever neither us nor anyone has ever had to be saved from what god would do to us <laughs> which um is the whole doctrinal system of darkness it, it's the that's the whole program I mean, which, the, is, which is exactly what we have to be saved from. We, we are saturated with it. Uh, we've been it. Yeah, that, that's we've been, it. I, I read an interesting post, a thread this morning. Could it be being born again is, is turning away from religion? And, and isn't it interesting that the phrase, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, was said by Jesus to a religious leader, Nicodemus. Yeah. I, I, I want to, yeah, I want to, I want to just, uh, <laughs> I want us to wrap our arms around that. <clears throat> what we really need to be saved from is the whole concept that we need to be saved. I think that's the biggest con job of all time and shouldn't be surprised. I mean, uh, Satan, the evil one, whatever you want to call him, or it, or her, or whoever, uh, is the great liar, the great deceiver. So what, what greater deception could there be <laughs> than we need to be saved from an angry God? <clears throat> and in reality, what we need to be saved from, what all people need to be saved from, is that whole concept that we've been told. I mean, it, it, it's a, uh, man, it's a con job of all con jobs. And the good news is we know it now. We know it. We know that's a con job. We know it was never true to begin with. We know it's not true now for us or anybody. And we get to broadcast that to everybody. It, it's like one of you said before, it's, it's, it's a revelation. It's not an invitation. It's not even a proclamation. It's a, it's a revelation that <laughs> I, I, I'm, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I, I just, I can hardly sit still just even, even thinking about that. Um, anybody else feel that way? I would say well, if you like thinking of Jesus as your savior, because you've thought of him that way so long, what does that, what should that really mean to us? I mean, maybe that's already been answered, but I just would like to have it explained to me. How is Jesus our savior king, for instance? Yeah, that, well, that, that's, that's a great question. Kitsi and I were talking about that the other day. What, what did Jesus come to save us from? 
when when Jesus, uh, if, if you think about the whole situation, it was the religious system and the government and the, the people in general that all came together. Uh, and as, as Stacy said last week, when he looked it up, you know, doctrine, governments have doctrines, uh, uh, religion has doctrines. Jesus came to save us from that whole concept. The whole concept of religion, the Jewish religion, and any and every other religion, the whole concept is that we're separate from God. God's angry at us because we messed up. We have to do something to get back and get right with him. What Jesus did, I mean, he, he, he showed us in the flesh that he is God. I mean, he proved that by the, the things that he did and miracles and, and by his teaching and everything. <clears throat> but what he, what he did was... He let us do the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst to him that could ever be done to a human being. Nothing's ever been invented that, that was worth, worse than Roman crucifixion. He let us do that without stopping us, without retaliation, without chastising us, without, I mean, he let us do that to him, let us kill him said before he died father forgive them they just don't know what they're doing and then rose again with a smile on his face and said as one as jody said earlier peace <laughs> peace be unto you i i what 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 jesus saved us from was that whole concept that God was angry with us because we'd done something wrong. And the way that he did that was to let us do the worst wrong ever conceived and still not be mad at us. What a demonstration. Yeah, Kitsy. Well, I would just, I would just say to, in answer to Carolyn's question, and it's pretty much what you've said, is that mm -hmm. Jesus came to save us from believing the darkness. Mm. Yes, it, 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 it's interesting to me. I mean, this this whole thing of religion comes from from a spirit of lack. I mean, it goes back to Genesis three. You know what, Eve? You guys just haven't quite got it. And if you'll just do this other this one more thing, then you'll be godly. Then you'll be as God. Well, that's a lie. I mean, right? Genesis one already said we're made his image, right? So we we are as God. And. And, and, and it's interesting to me then that that the very the very engine that's put together the very the very organizational structure institution whatever you want to call it that's put together to save us if you will saying that that's what it's doing is literally motivated by people who have bought the lie themselves and have, by the way found a way to profit from it guys never forget ten percent is a great commission right and and. And so it's, it's it, they found a way to make it profitable, financially profitable, but not spiritually profitable at all, and 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 so it feeds itself, uh, and 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 the more these people, uh, the more these institutions justify their existence, the more lost they feel, because they they have to continually believe that 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 they are separated from God in order to passionately present that you're separated from God. And, and so the, the foundation of, 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 of Calvinism is that mankind is, is totally depraved, completely the reverse of made in God's image. That, boy, that's exactly right. Jody's next and then Stacy. Jody? Um, well, to me, it seems like it just kind of boils down to, at least in part, that he's saved us from ourselves because we have come up, we believe these lies. We come up with these lies. We come up with all this other stuff. And he's telling us, no, that it, it's not that it's, it's God. Um, so that's just kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. That, boy, that's exactly right. Yeah. Stacy. This, this very section that we're looking at today, it tells us what Christ is saving us from. Uh, if you go back, look at the greek it's, it's spread the word and i think the the term they used was either logos or logon something some form of that and if you dig deep enough into that uh 
one of the meetings is the thoughts of God as expressed by Christ through the spirit. So they're saying, you know, share with everyone the thoughts of God expressed by Christ through the spirit, because people are going to try to twist it around into what it is they want to hear. You know, that's my short hillbilly version of the section we're reading. And uh, that's exactly what Jesus is saving us from, you know, telling us what God thinks versus all this other stuff. That is exactly right. And I, I, what all of that other stuff is the man-made doctrines that, that we have come up with. That's right. Yeah, Stanley. Yeah, G- Jesus came to show us the Father. He saved us from this false concept of God as judge and show us he's our Father. Yeah, he did indeed. And I, yeah, and I, I was just thinking, you know, Jesus said, I am the way. The uh, <laughs> I am the way, the truth, and the life. All of these other ways that we've been that we've come up with and propagated, promulgated. All, all of these other <laughs> ways, <laughs> they're uh, they're not the right way. Uh, and you know, I I, I love what uh, Paul Young says in the shack. Uh, you know, one one of the characters. Well, Jesus is is, is responding to. Uh, uh, the main character, uh, but he, so he says, so are, are, do all roads lead to you? No, no, not at all. Most roads lead nowhere, <clears throat> but I'm willing to go down any and every road everywhere, uh, you know, to be with you. And uh, yeah, Carolyn, did you have something before that I cut you off that you were going to say? No, uh, but I'm, I'm still... I'm still puzzled by something. Most of what people are saying, save Jesus saved us from, would be saving us from religious doctrines. But let's just say somebody is an atheist or agnostic. They've never really thought about, maybe they don't, they don't have any awareness of their spirituality. And they're just, they're just happy. They're just living a good life, whatever, you know. What do they need Jesus for? That's still a I'm religious saying doctrine. That. What? You know? That's still a religious doctrine. Atheism is still a religious doctrine. It's well, just right, not what, but, we, what we consider a religious doctrine. Right. But, but if you're not just not even thinking about there being anything except what you see, is that a doctrine? It's, it's a deception, yeah. That's what it's all about. It's about re- delivering us from deception. And it's just a deception, so. Mm-hmm. So we ask it anyway. It, it's saving us from being in that darkness. Uh, and it might, you know, might be, might use the expression, well, I'm just happy as a clam. I, you know, I don't, I don't uh, have any religious thoughts or anything like that. Um, but, uh, and in one sense, that's true. But in another sense, uh, when somebody thinks that, they miss out on the abundant life uh, that they could be having uh, if, if they could see the light and see what is really true and, and available mm-hmm. for them. Well, I agree with that. I just, I'm just trying to think how how do you present this and how do you explain your beliefs to people who don't have a worry about knowing Jesus? You know, I mean, just other than maybe they may have pride in their own thinking what they're about their own goodness coming just from their DNA or something. And, but that, but basically we're saying, yes, it does. Well, Jeff's going to explain that to us. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> oh, well, here's what's rumbling around in me. Uh, it's 1 John 1, 7, and we've been talking about light. And the reason I was looking into this scripture earlier today was I wanted to know what my question of the scripture was, what did God mean by the blood? And so I got my answer, but I think it also offers us other things to consider. But uh, in the New English translation, it says, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And looking in Strong's uh, on the, for the Greek, some of the uh, additional meanings of words, blood, for instance, means uh, kindred. You know, like I'm of the bloodline. And so it's a, it's, it's a, uh, it, it, it puts possession on the one that the blood cleanses, meaning my own. And the other word was uh, Jesus, let's see, his son, okay. Of Jesus, his son, in this in this version, it's a it's a masculine singular genitive noun, and it means kinship. So the way the scripture would read now is, and the and the kindred of his son, his his kinship, and to me it just it just felt like arms were wrapping around me and I was understanding that God's claimed me he's cleansed me from all sin and sin in this is singular and I think that could be equated to not not our sin but the sin against us in the darkness this present darkness that obscures this light without and within from fellowship yeah oh that was so wasn't that good Yes. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> Very good. What uh, wh what was the concept of, of blood in Bible times? Uh, you know, before they scientifically knew what what did they think? Uh, well, I just they thought blood is 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 where the life is, right? Really? Isn't that right? For a yeah. Well, it's so, pretty accurate current assessment. Pardon me. I said that's a pretty accurate current assessment. And blood is where life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, without without blood, <laughs> you know, there 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 is no life. The the blood of Jesus saves us. And I I agree with what you said, Jeff. That was very enlightening. The kinship. Uh, I think it also means the life of Jesus. Uh, uh, and and that that particular verse, you know, when we walk in the light, um, does anybody have the? Um, I can get it. Anybody have the mirror uh, handy? First John one seven. I I love the the mirror translation of that. Somebody does. I've got the mirror here. Yeah, First uh, John one seven. I'd have to. I'd have to. First John. I've got it here. First John one seven. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. We are invited to explore the dimensions of the same light that engulfs God. When we see the light in his light, fellowship ignites. In his light, we understand how the blood of Jesus is the removal of every stain of sin. The success of the cross celebrates our redeemed innocence. I like how it says the success of the cross. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And, it's, and it celebrates the success of yeah. the cross. Celebrates. It, it is finished. <laughs> He's, Jesus succeeded. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? That's that's why I love the um, that description. You know, we we can live life like it's our victory lap every single day. We're not running the race now. We're literally living our victory lap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're taking the victory lap. That's wonderful. That's good. Yeah. Ooh. All right, I, I want to uh, move on to the 
<laughs> the next phrase in that one verse. We may not get through one verse today. Uh, we're doing a Baxter Kruger here. Broadcast the good news on every occasion, even when it doesn't seem to be convenient or appropriate. Give evidence to this message. What is uh, what comes to your mind when you see that phrase? Give evidence to the message of the good news. Don't Off hide your light under a bushel. Don't let your life hide under a bushel. Yeah. I was in a situation a number of years ago where I was out to dinner. I'd, I'd take a pastor friend and his wife, there were like six of us in the group, and we went out to dinner, and we thought we had a reservation for a room that set aside, but we got there, and the young lady came to us and said, Mr. Engel, I'm sorry, uh, we don't have your reservation. We're going to have to put a couple of tables together and so on. So in her mind, her evening didn't start very well with us. I mean, you've already got a, a customer here, right, that's not going to work well, and and and, and but we sat down, we had her, we prayed over our meal, by the way, and we had our meal. And and when she brought the ticket, the Lord just it was, I, I don't hear voices, but boy, I know when I'm spoken to, and the Lord said, tip her in cash. And and I, I had a debit card that I was gonna pay for dinner. The only cash I had was a $20 bill. Well, it was like a $60 bill, it wasn't an expensive dinner, but it was real clear to me that I was supposed to do that. So I I pulled a $20 bill out and handed to her and said, this is for you. And the pastor, John Brown over at Harmony Vineyard was, was with us. And he pulled a 10, I'll never forget what he said. He said, I'll see your 10, 20 and raise you 10. So here this young lady who disappeared us theoretically at the door, it's all of a sudden getting a 50% tip. And she walked away and I said, John, you didn't have to do that. And he said, oh yes, I did. He said, if we're children of the almighty God, we need to leave his, D his DNA everywhere we are. And he said to this young lady, who, by the way, is used to having seeing people pray over a meal and get handed a gospel tract for a tip. Uh, this young lady, this young lady just 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 got the DNA of God. He said, as a matter of fact, I've got a sermon on that. And he was a guest preacher, a guest pastor. It was on a Saturday evening, and I said, I don't know what you plan to preach tomorrow, but I know what you're going to preach now. And he did the DNA of God. That's where I got that. And and so to answer the question is. Everywhere we go, with whatever we do, we are leaving behind uh, 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 forensic pathologists. will tell you that if you walk in a room, you leave a trace of yourself behind. Everywhere we go, we are to leave. We are we are to be ourselves. Okay, we're who God made. According to every one of us, just as we are, according to His good pleasure. If we leave ourselves there, we have literally. We have literally witnessed God. We've left the DNA of God at where we were. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, Stacy? Stacy? You know, I, I was just thinking it, it literally means to walk the talk and, and it reminds me that, you know, we have these opportunities to do that. Uh, not that long ago, I was walking down Mass with some friends after dinner. There were a couple kids that uh, were about to have a big fight and we kept going. Somebody came up on the uh, corner and, and do you know for sure you're going to go to heaven? And I said, absolutely, positively and kept going. Well, the Holy Spirit told me a little bit later that, you know, he's tossing me the ball and I didn't take the swing because I said, next time you tell him that, yeah, I'm sure I'm going. I'm sure you're going. I'm sure these kids about to fight down here are going. I'm sure everybody on the street's going. Oh, that's and, uh, good. You know, that's just the conviction. It's it, it wasn't condemnation because I didn't do that. It's just, oh, you missed your opportunity. If it comes up again, th this is how you need to handle that. So yeah. I'm going to remember that, Stacy, because we very often pass those same people. Mm -hmm. And we'll answer the same way you did, but not anymore. We're going to answer right. the same way you've just taught us to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff? Oh, I'm just going to say the Holy Spirit has an answer if we've got a moment to listen. Yep. It's remembering to take that moment to be in the moment to hear what God would say in the moment. Yeah. And and though a lot of these things we hear just kind of are tracks that are playing in the back of our mind and somebody will say and it's like, oh, yeah, I know to ignore that. But maybe God, it doesn't ignore it, as you found out, uh, Stacy. And uh wouldn't it be interesting to hear what he hear what he would say? Mm. 
I, I said something the other day in a, in a call that it's one of those things that comes out of your mouth and then you hear it, you know, it, mm-hmm. and, and what I said was we are the gospel. We just haven't been written yet. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's very good. I want to give you uh, all of those things are wonderful. I want, I want to give uh, a couple of uh, other uh, evidences in um, th- these are just things that, that came to mind. Obviously, we, we give evidence by how we treat other people, how we relate to them. Uh, uh, you know, are, are we, uh, uh, you know, quick to forgive? Are, are we not easily angered? And uh, all of those different things. Um, you know, uh, another one of them is, uh, is how we, certainly how we care for other people. And I want to th- thank you guys. You know, we, we talked about, well, my, my video this week was uh, actually based on a message that I did, I don't know, two or three months ago. Um, but it's talking about the Grace Restoration Team, and uh, which uh, uh, some of you guys have uh, given to that and, and give every month. Uh, because of you all yesterday, uh, Kitsy and I had the, the excitement and the privilege and the joy of, uh, of helping a single mom and her daughter who are moving into uh, another uh, house that one of you all is providing, uh, we were able to present her with a check for $2,000 to get appliances uh, that she need that she doesn't have. And uh, I mean, th- that's tangible evidence. And I, I wanted to tell you guys, uh, you know, when we did that, <clears throat> I, I was thinking about each one of you guys I, w- I was thinking about the people who have given to that fund and, and who, who give to it every month. Uh, man, that, that's tangible evidence of, of being Christ, <clears throat> of broadcasting, you know, the good news. And, uh, and we have another person uh, that uh, uh, a couple of you all know about who's, who's also uh, a single mom now with three little kids that's <clears throat> uh, been approved to, for housing that she's been waiting on. She's in another state uh, and just waiting for the final uh, details of exactly how much the, uh, the deposits are going to be and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, but, but we committed, uh, you know, up to $3,000 for her. Uh, to help her and, and that you know that money is in the account we, we you guys have already given that that money is in the account and as soon as that happens you know i will tell you all about that and there's there's more money uh more money pledged more money coming in the account uh, that, that we know of that will help us you know continue to do that that that's giving tangible evidence and i i, I just want to say you know thank you to you guys and uh, uh rejoice in that and uh, you know, just, you know, be joyful, take joyful. And, and then another thing along that line, uh, those of you who are here in, in Lawrence or around here, or you, any of you can Google this. If, if, you, if you go online and, and look at our paper, the Lawrence Journal World, uh, there were three stories in it this morning about the Heartland Medical Clinic. And some of you were with us when we started the Heartland Medical Clinic, it started in our church on a Saturday morning in October of 1999. It started with a doctor and his wife, Kitsy and me, and a nurse in in the lobby of our church uh, with the nursery being used as a patient room. And uh, we we saw, I don't know, eight or 10, homeless people provided free medical care for them. It just grew. We, we have an old expression in the United States. It grew like Topsy. I don't know who Topsy was or is, but <clears throat> that, that's how it grew. I mean, it's it a popcorn in Kansas city, by the way, that's a Kansas city <laughs> phrase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it grew like Topsy and these stories today, I mean, it, we moved to another building and uh, it, it kind of, took over our whole building here, all the Sunday school rooms and everything. And then the Lord provided a, another 8,000 square foot uh, space for us, uh, state of the art thing. Uh, then it moved to another location and it's moving now to where Anderson's rental used to be on sixth street. 
across from McDonald's there. The article, yeah, the articles this morning said they have a, a, a patient waiting room there that accommodates 80 people. Wow. And a, a state-of-the-art check-in uh, thing, like some of us have, have seen in doctor's offices where you know we do it on a kiosk type thing. <clears throat> there are 37 patient rooms. When we started, we had one patient room that was wow. a nursery uh, and <laughs> 37 patient rooms. There's, uh, according to this article, the largest dental clinic in our county is there under that roof. Uh, there's also a food pantry. There's, uh, there's counseling stuff available. I mean, it's, it's and <laughs> when, we, when we started, the budget was zero. There was no budget. Every, every, everybody volunteered. Uh, uh, there was no budget. We, we, we started getting uh, drug representatives giving us drugs and, and, and other you know doctors would retire and give us their stuff and all that kind of stuff. You know what the budget is now? It's over $15 million. <laughs> I mean, it's, that, that started 22 years ago. In, in the lobby of our church where Maselli's is now. I just wanted to share that with you because, I mean, that's, that's tangible evidence of, of what God is doing. Well, uh, God gives a vision to one person. In that case, he gave it to one person, to Dennis Sale, our friend, a, a, a doctor, and some other people caught the vision and we caught it and we cast it to other people. And we, and we haven't had any involvement there for over 10 years now. Uh, some, some of you go there and you benefit from it, but we haven't uh, had any involvement in the leadership or, uh, or uh, giving to it uh, institutionally as the, the church did every month for a decade. Uh, but those things, uh, I mean, helping individuals like the single moms and their kids, uh, helping uh, people without insurance, homeless people and all that. I mean, th those are tangible things of, you know, and, and I think it's in Acts 1038 that said, you know, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and he went around doing good all the time, helping uh, uh, people. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what, what this, that's what the scripture says, uh, broadcast this good news on every occasion, even when it doesn't seem to be convenient or appropriate, give evidence to this message. You know, it's not just a, it, it's not just a, a doctrine. It's not just a, uh, a theological exercise. It's not something that uh, <clears throat> we write down and say uh, something about God. You know, it's tangibly making a difference in people's lives, which uh, I, I, I know you guys, some of you I've never, uh, you're my best friends that I've never met in person yet, but uh, I, but I, I know you guys, even, even you guys across the pond, I know what your lives are like. I know that you do this stuff every day. You help people, you encourage people, you give to people, you, uh, you help them know who they are, you help them know uh, who, who God is and that he's not angry with them and that he's never been angry with them and he's in them and he loves them and his grace covers everything. You, I mean, you guys, you guys do this. You do this with your family. You do this with your friends. Uh, you do this, but giving tips to, uh, to waitress. I mean, it, it's just, it's so much fun for me to see what's happening. And to me, that that's giving tangible evidence to this message. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I want to say thanks. And I, I'm just going to uh, briefly run, run through the other things in this one verse and then we'll stay with us and move on from uh, next week um, uh, value every individual in your audience highly <laughs> boy that's that's the most tangible evidence that i know of that we really know god father son and spirit know who they are that that we value them all highly that we see christ in all of them that we see people as he does esteem people's authentic identity identity passionately i mean that that's just what we're talking about esteem 
people's authentic identity passionately. Oh man. And then teach tireless, tirelessly, uh, you know, and that's, uh, uh, you guys all do that in different ways. And, and I have, uh, you know, every, every once in a while, I, you know, I'll, I'll run into people who say, uh, uh, well, you enjoying your retirement and, uh, uh, and I'll tell them, man, I'm enjoying life, but uh, I'm, I'm anything but uh, uh, retired. Uh, and that's because I'm, I'm teaching these things tirelessly, uh, and, and, and which we all do, no matter what our age uh, uh, is, teaching, uh, teaching tirelessly. And I, I just, you know, as, as God gave me uh, yeah, what, what I was going to teach on this morning, what I planned on, and, and I, I'll get to that next week or the week after was Colossians 2.10. Uh, but the Lord just showed me this, uh, you know, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to, 1 to 4, uh, that, uh, uh, man, this, this, this is not something that, uh, that I preach to you guys about and uh, uh, exhort you to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what you're doing uh, that I see. This is what we're all doing that that I see us all doing, and uh, and we rejoice in in celebrating that. And uh, man, it's just it's so it's so good, and it's so different than than what um, I used to experience. So, um, can I say one thing? Yeah, about this. What I really like is the um, what are the adjectives that they that he uses? Well, this isn't an adjective like broadcast. I mean, broadcast is big. Um, uh, oops, um, value every indi uh, individual highly, esteem passionately, and then teach tirelessly. I mean, those are just like fireworks kind of things to me yeah yeah stan yeah paul what you were describing what the word that came to me was worship and you're mm -hmm. saying what we are doing what that is is worship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good yeah uh, it is isn't it I'd, I'd like to say by the way that i am greatly uh, blessed to be in the presence of a true proverbs 31 woman I noticed that Sister Carrie not only ministered the gospel, but she did the ironing. And that, that's a oh. true <laughs> How did you see that? Because I can't see you guys. I can well, only see Paul. Do, if you do it on a... Paranoid, but we have ways, Sister. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have eyes well, to see. It's, it's, but I, it's, I absolutely um, love Monday it. Sorry, it's Monday morning here in New Zealand, and it's about called to six I think and I've got to be I've got to be at work by 6 30 so um I like to get my ironing done on a Monday well, morning sure. in my opinion that was an absolutely classic example of what we're talking about you you, you were going about you are going about your daily life and ministering the gospel at the same as you do it <laughs> it Where totally do it? is because when I go to school that's my opportunity, and I like I know my, I, I suppose because my life is pretty much around my job and around my home, around my garden. I live in Central Hawkes Bay, which is a very small town, and um, we're a little community um, of people. And for me, it's just a wonderful. You know, I love my job because it's such a wonderful opportunity just to. Or, you know, you can always look for opportunities just to um, go the extra mile. Um, and I'm working with children. Wow, what a privilege. I just love it. I love, love, love these little children. And um, oh, and we had Halloween last night, you see. No, oh, it's over for you. All the yeah. children came past dressed in their clothes and got, um, oh, I did cookies for them. And... Um, it was just lovely, and it, we, it's a great life. We it live is. the dream. We a, live a, the dream. A, a, <laughs> yeah, we do. A couple of things for you, Carrie. You, you're going to have visitors next year. Uh, Mike and Barb Popovich and Kitsy and I are going to come see you. And uh, No! Yeah. 
I go, really? We are. Oh. We are. We've already we've already talked about that. You said and no, I, Paul. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, uh, so exciting. Yeah. And <laughs> if if you uh, the reason you can't see everybody, the only way you can see everybody is to do this on a, a laptop or a desktop. That that gives wow. you the capacity okay. to see everybody. Well, you uh, can also see it on an iPad. Everybody at the same time? Well, no, it might be on two screens, but you just would have to swipe over to see, but you can see yeah. multiple people. Yeah. Yeah. But that's to see the collections, the gallery view. By the way, sister, if you if it's okay, I'm gonna send you some shirts and I'd like light starch, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, my, classic Mike, example. Classic Mike and, example. Couldn't, Mike and Barb couldn't. and Kitsy and I are going to bring our laundry too. So, <laughs> couldn't have been a better brilliant. example. That is so cool. Yeah. All right. Any anything else, especially from anybody who hadn't had the opportunity to uh, <laughs> to say anything? Uh, any comments from other folks? Bob, you've had the opportunity, but go ahead. Oh. I, I, I was just, I'm, my battery went down on my laptop. I'm on my phone and I was touching stuff, but I, I don't mean to cut in on anybody else. Oh. But I, I've got to say that, that she was absolutely the picture of what we've been talking about today while she was standing there doing that laundry at Minister of the Gospel. Absolutely the picture. And as were the rest of you. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Who else wants to say something? Mark? I just want to say I'm on the road. Uh, you know, every. Sunday, late Sunday morning, I go get Matthew. So I've kept this on mute because of the road noise, but it was a great discussion and I really enjoyed it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mark. And I know that you've, you've been with us and uh, uh, Mark's uh, son is, uh, um, has some uh, physical challenges and Mark goes to see him every Sunday and they go out and do something together. and. I, I've got to meet his son online and uh, pray for their family every day and uh, sure as as I do for the rest of you guys and I appreciate appreciate you all being here. Anybody else? Closing thoughts. Uh, Paul. Yeah. I'd like to address everybody in our little consortium here. Uh, have you ever seen a hardworking waitress? Pride at a 120% tip and tell you this will finish out the last of this month's payment. Thank you. Wow. That would be awesome. Wow. That's the gospel. Yeah. So, Paul, I just have to remind myself sometimes when it tells me to do this tirelessly, it doesn't mean I won't ever get tired, but it means I have to be patient. <laughs> Yeah. Just a quick question, Paul. What was the name of that newspaper you said the article was in? The Lawrence Journal World. Okay. And the uh, the website is ljwworld.com. And then uh, look up. LJW World? LJW World. Uh, LJ World. I'm sorry. ljworld.com. Or just Google Lawrence, Kansas, and the Lawrence Journal World, and then uh, then look up uh, Heartland Medical Clinic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what a wonderful time being with you guys. I, uh, man, this is just it, it's really good, and uh, it's a great start to the week. Pardon me. It's a great start to the week. <laughs> yeah, great start to the week. Yeah, and you're off, you're off to work today. So uh, encourage the kids and the people there. And uh, I love all of you guys. I'll see some of you during the week and uh, see some of you again next. I'll see some of you tomorrow with our Pure Light every Walker Sunday, class. Every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday. Yeah. And, and no meeting tonight. Yeah. No yeah, we, we're not meeting tonight. So uh, those of us who want to can uh, be involved in Halloween here 
uh, in the States. So, all right. Hey, love all of you guys. I'll love see you, you all. See you all next time. Love you guys. Bye. See you. Bye.